Today, we will be learning how to make a do-it-yourself, self-filling bee watering station. Just like most of the organisms on our planet, bees need a continual fresh source of water to survive and do their essential job of pollination. Interestingly, not only do bees drink the water, they also use it to cool down their hives during hot summer months, feed younger bees, and even dilute stored honey. Despite water being essential to the bees' well-being, not all beehives are near a natural, clean source of water. In urban areas, for example, they will search for any source of water, which can include chlorinated pool water, polluted water, or even pesticide-tainted water runoff. The least we can do is provide them with a watering station that doesn't have any contaminants, is away from potential predators, and plenty of landing spots to prevent bee drownings. The last part is particularly important, as to note, bees can't swim, so providing them with landing spots to hydrate is extremely important. How do I make my own bee watering station? The first thing you need is any shallow container that can hold water. Bird baths, hummingbird feeders, shallow dishes, or even Tupperware containers can be used. We've chosen to go a DIY approach for ours. So the things that you will need are a three gallon water jug with a cap on top, a shallow container that can fit the three gallon water jug inside, two soda bottles, a small hacksaw, power drill and a step drill bit that includes a half inch option, food safe silicone sealant, fine mesh, we used a lint trap set for ours, sandpaper, and any stones or marbles that you can find. The first step is to grab your three gallon jug and your container. You want to be marking the jug where you want to drill a hole. Please ensure that the mark sits slightly below the top of your container, so when it's filled with water, the water doesn't overflow. The next step, using your power drill and the step drill bit, drill a hole where you made the mark and line it up. Make sure it's up to the half inch mark on your drill bit. After this is done, you want to use your sandpaper and sand down any edges to ensure a smooth surface. This will allow the silicone to bond properly. Grab your soda bottle. You'll want to cut off the cap as indicated right along this edge. Your cap might have an uneven edge after cutting. Using a piece of sandpaper, sand down the cap as level as possible to prevent any gaps for the silicone. Your cap should look like this when you're done. Apply a small amount of your food safe silicone all around the lip of the cap. Next, seal it right on top of the hole that you just drilled. Apply some pressure and let it set.
feel free to wipe off any excess of the time and double check if there's any gaps. Apply a second bead of silicone to ensure an airtight seal. Wipe off any excess again. You want to let the silicone cure for at least 24 hours before you fill the jug with water. Some of you might be wondering why we have a second cap. This gives you an accessible place to put your soda cap once you've taken off the bottom. Place some silicone on the edge of the cap and attach it anywhere on top of your jug. Once you've let the silicone cure for 24 hours, you can now fill the jug up with water. It's a good idea to inspect the seal carefully to make sure that there is no leak. This is important because if the air gets inside the jug, your station will overflow with water. The next step is to install the mesh guard for the bottom cap. The purpose of this mesh is to prevent any debris that could block the flow of water and most importantly any curious bee from climbing inside the jug. So what you want to do is with the bottom cap facing up, mold the mesh around the bottom and secure it with a zip tie. Ideally it should be tight enough to hold the mesh in place but loose enough so it can slip on and off when needed. You can now put your filled water jug into the container. The water should be flowing out a little slow and you can unscrew the top cap to allow for a faster water flow. Just be sure to tighten the top cap back up when the water level gets close to the top of the cap on the bottom. If your station has no leaks and the top cap is airtight, then the water level should remain right at the bottom cap. The next step is to provide the bees with landing spots so they can safely enjoy the watering station you just made. Carefully place the stones or marbles or a combination of both in the container and make sure as you're doing so to avoid any large pockets of deep water Please note that as you add the stones and marbles to your station, the water level will rise. You can pour out some of the water and ideally have the water level right at the top of the bottom cap. Most of the stones and marbles should be above the water level to maximize the amount of bees that can drink from your station. There you go. You just created your own DIY bee watering station. Should you add anything to the water? The answer is generally no. Anything sweet with includes sugar water, 
could attract ants or any other unwanted insects. Additionally, we don't want our bees to identify this water source as a primary source of food, rather than the flowers they have pollinate and extract nectar from. The one exception to this rule is to initially add an attractant to the water to help your bees find this new water source. It is heavily theorized that bees largely rely on scent and water that with a slight scent is more appealing to them than plain water from the tap. Some attractants that have been used are weak salt solutions, a teaspoon of chlorine bleach, lemongrass oil, or even some ground oysters. Once the bees are accustomed to your source of water, you can stop adding your attractant. It should be noted that there has been significant academic research in which bees have demonstrated a preference for sea salt water as it contains nutrients that are crucial to the bees' well-being. Furthermore, there has been evidence that bees who have been feeding on salt water have shown significantly higher foraging activity during the summer and winter seasons compared to the bees that have been just feeding on deionized water. The suggested ratio of sea salt to water is one teaspoon per gallon of water, which will give you a 0.1% salt solution. If you choose to do this, you will need three teaspoons of salt for our DIY bee watering station in total. Where should I put my bee watering station? Close, but not too close, as bees may get confused in communicating the water source to their fellow worker bees if it's placed too close to the hive. Within a hundred feet of your hive is generally a good rule of thumb and preferably around their foraging area, but not too close to any high foot traffic areas is a good spot to put your station. Should I change the water out frequently? You should change the water out every one to two weeks to remove any debris or any other potential pests or contaminants. Make sure to top up the water more frequently during hot climates as your bees will be thirsting for more water. Your hardworking bees deserve the cleanest water that you can provide for them. Make sure to follow Daydant on all of our social media, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram to keep up to date with all things beekeeping.